Your treatment should uh, be based on the severity of the infection. So patients who have an initial C. diff infection that's mild or moderate, meaning um, they're not too sick, they're not hospitalized, um, those can be treated primarily with metronidazole or flagyl um, because of its low cost and uh, generally effective. Um, patients, and that's a 10-day uh, course of metronidazole, um, patients who have more severe disease, um, either a high white blood cell count, abdominal tenderness, um, alterations in their kidney function associated with the C. diff, they should be treated with vancomycin um, because there are uh, small numbers of C. diff strains out there that are metronidazole resistant, so you really don't want to mess around when someone's much sicker. You give them vancomycin, 125 milligrams, uh, four times a day for 10 to 14 days. Um, and then people who've had recurrent C. diff, where it's coming back and coming back, um, you know, you treat an initial recurrence with, recurrence with vancomycin, a standard two-week course, Subsequent recurrences should be treated with a uh, pulsed or tapering course of vancomycin. So they get a two week course, and then you sort of either wean the vancomycin away or you give a dose every three days, which is what I tend to do. I give them a day, two days off, and then a dose of vanco, and I do that for 10 more doses. Usually, I'll add a probiotic in at that point. And you have a percentage of people who become uh, kind of multiply recurrent, have this kind of chronic recurring C. diff pattern, and those patients are candidates for fecal microbiota transplant, or FMT. So C. diff is a disease that's caused by antibiotics, and we treat it with antibiotics. So it's kind of, uh, so, but the, we treat it with antibiotics that have um, activity against C. diff. And we have a couple of options. Uh, metronidazole, um, it's been around forever, very inexpensive. Um, it's also known as flagyl. Um, in second line, you know, vancomycin, um, a little bit, a lot more expensive, probably 10 times more expensive. Um, and then there's an antibiotic that was approved in 2011 called fidaxomycin, and they're, um, kind of shtick is that they are more, uh, uh, less broad spectrum. See, flagell and vanco not only kill C. diff, but they kill a lot of other good bacteria at the same time. Fidexamycin says, no, we're more narrow spectrum. We only target C. diff itself, and we leave all the other good bacteria alone. Um, for that, it's more expensive. Uh, was 3000 I think it recently came down to closer to $2,000 for a 10-day course. Um, but because it's so much more expensive and because in their studies they haven't shown to be more effective than vancomycin, which is more available and cheaper, the, the, the pro professional society guidelines haven't yet, you know, really known where to put fidexamycin in terms of the treatment algorithm. So we don't use it too much. I think with uh, Flagyl. Um, you can't drink alcohol at all when you're on metronidazole. You get a disulfiram type reaction, so it's essentially the same thing that you, what happens when someone takes antabuse to not drink alcohol. You get terrible vomiting and just really, really sick. Um, with um, People don't feel always super well on metronidazole. They have a lot of nausea. It makes sort of a metallic taste in their mouth. Um, they're often intolerant. I'll have people call me after a couple of days of metronidazole. Like, I just can't take it. With long-term use, metronidazole can cause neuropathy. <laughs> at higher doses that can be irreversible. So you wouldn't want to put somebody on high dose metronidazole for months and months. That's not a great idea. Um, vancomycin, um, on the other hand, is pretty well tolerated. It's not systemically absorbed when given orally. It really focuses just in the colon. Um, I mean, I think I've very rarely seen someone who had like an allergic reaction to it, but as far as side effects, really there aren't very many. Same goes for fidaxomycin. It sort of concentrates in the gut. It doesn't really go systemic, and there really haven't been a lot of um, safety adverse safety effects related to either of those.